Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Morning Break Part 2. Today with us in the studio we have a very special guest, Sister Zahra Jaber, who is one of the organizers of the Youth of Mahdi organization. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Wa alaikum, assalamu wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for coming in today. Could you start by telling us a little bit about the Youth of Mahdi and the, the service that they actually offer? Basically we're a group of about 15 up to 20 depending because sometimes people leave, sometimes come back. Depends on your commitment. Um, and we've kind of um, got Saturday lessons at the Islamic Centre of England. Mm -hmm. uh, it started off in March and we're continuing on. We've only had uh, a two week break exam time. Um, we have Aqa'id lessons mm -hmm. uh, where we have um, people like Sheikh Hanif who have come in as well, um, who will be back hopefully soon. Uh, we've had Sayyid Muhammad Musawi. We've had Dr. El Usi, and inshallah, we'll have more and more guests coming in to speak to us and you know, you know, broaden our knowledge. Uh, we've had Tajweed uh, lessons where you know we try to perfect our Quran because regardless, I mean, most of us are Arabic, but there are still laws that you have to kind of understand mm -hmm. and you have to go into. I mean, not, not every Arabic person can read perfectly. The the Quran language is different to the language majority of us speak, obviously. So we go into that and. Inshallah, uh, once we do that, then maybe we can go on to the actual tafsir of the Qur'an, but let us perfect the laws of it and how to read it. And then, inshallah ta'ala, we'll go into that. And we've also got uh, another, each one is uh, separated into our section. And the th um, third part is presentation. Each, each one of us has like a part to do of, first of all, we started off with the Ma'sumin, alayhi mm -hmm. wa salam. Each one of the members, for example, wonders about the birth, wonders about if the, if the imama, for example, how they, so the successorship of how they've become, mm -hmm. um, and their death or whatever, anything that's, you know, major, you know, major in their life that's happened. Um, we go through every week. It's, uh, each month we give about two weeks, depending, of okay. course. Yeah. If it, if it really needs to step into the third week, then we'll do that. Is the response good? Like, how many people come on a weekly basis? The thing is, we really want commitment with like things like Tajweed, for example. If somebody's missed out the laws that we've uh, covered the week previously, and they're not here, and they're missing out, um, then it's difficult for the person to repeat again for one or two people. I mean, because sometimes if it's not often, I mean, if you've got an excuse, like, say, for a week or two throughout many weeks, then okay. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you're not committed, you feel like coming in one week and you don't feel coming in the next week, mm -hmm. then we can't really move on. So um, we've kind of stressed to members that if you can't be committed to the group, you can't come on Saturdays, then you know, we, there are, we've got to prioritise and take in other people who are able to be committed and who are able to keep up because it's very difficult for us to keep going when we keep stepping backwards because we're never going to go forward when people are going to keep stepping out. So we've got around uh, about 20 people now um, and we're, we, you know, um, it's fine. Uh, but inshallah we would like to have more people in future the, the actual classroom where we've booked in the Islamic Centre is quite small but I'm sure we can move it I mean even if the Islamic Centre some rooms are not big enough for us uh, we can go elsewhere but as long as we have the people mm -hmm. then we can move on mm. that's great how you've got 20 committed people yeah, already absolutely. because yeah. I, mean, I was expecting you know maybe it would be less but that's alhamdulillah that's that's that's, that's really really good and is it is it um just women or is it you know it is just women we we really wanted to do something just for us girls for us girls you know cause sometimes people go to other events and things and and they might not feel comfortable or they might mm -hmm. go for a different intention but we wanted it purely yeah. for the sake of learning for the sake of educating ourselves and in future if we do have a chance or if we can get more in you know speakers if we have the facilities maybe we can do a session for the boys but obviously on like separate days because it would be more comfortable for us girls Absolutely. even now like when we work um do other works and you know when we're speaking out some people especially the younger ones they might not be comfortable mm -hmm. speaking out yeah. in front of the opposite gender because we do have girls from about the age of 10 11 mm -hmm. till up to 23 so it's it's quite a range mm -hmm. um yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one thing I was going to say. You mentioned um, earlier that you generally um, everyone attending is is Arabic speaking. 
Um, what ab is that open to people from other communities? And, and what about in terms of if someone wanted to, if, if someone's watching and they're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm interested in going along to that, but my Arabic's rubbish, for example, are they able to join in at any point? Or would it be best for them to, because you, I'm assuming you guys are at a certain level now, is it hard for them to join in? Um, maybe they can go over, like, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure that they, they'd be some level of Arabic and yeah. at least they'd know how to read, for mm -hmm. example. They don't have to really understand everything. Yeah. But then they can join in um, um, and then it'll be easier. Or in future, if we're able to, maybe we can have, you know, two sessions, one for people that don't know the Arabic uh, so well, ones for, you know, ones that are at a higher level in Arabic. So the thing is, because we've only started around March, so we're still, you know, we're still going, you yeah. know, mm. it, we can't do everything at one yeah. point. So hopefully, you know, mm. in the future we have plans, so yeah, yeah. Sure. The main thing is the, is the commitment. That's what you're looking for, aren't you? Yeah. But also I've, I've you know, uh, I know that the Youth of Methy also puts on plays as well on certain times of the year. Um, please tell us more about that and how you know you guys got into that. And what, and wh whose idea was it that you know the youth method can put on production plays as well? Uh, we have many girls, so a few of them thought, you know, why don't we actually kind of show? Because it's really different when you're actually, you know, acting when you're mm. using action and you you know, and it also hits the viewers as well. Mm. So um, we thought, you know, why don't we do a play for even the little children? Because sometimes the little children. Are left, are left aside and they don't know what's going on if you do if you have a lecture and they're like what's he or she saying you know yeah. but then when they see it and they're like oh this is fun yeah. oh this is this. oh yeah. this hasn't you know yeah. so um it, it, they, they it goes in their heads really and then they really absorb what's going on mm. so we wanted something for everyone as well uh, we do. We've had one for Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam uh, the secret of Umm Abiha. Um, we're hoping to do one for Imam Mahdi Ajala Ta'ala Farajah very soon for the uh, 15th of Sha'ban. Uh, maybe we'll have more in future, but we'll see close to the time. Uh, I mean, we've got plans, but we will confirm close to the time. We don't want to jump ahead. Um, we'll see how that goes. I mean, the turnout and everything was quite good in the previous one, so we're hoping to, you know, proceed in having great um, audience as well and people in the next one, inshallah. So you just mentioned the play that you're planning on doing for Imam Mahdi. When will that be shown? Because we're in Shaban right now. Yeah, it's going to be on the night uh, on the night of the 15th of Shaban. So it's going to be Monday the 26th, inshallah, inshallah. at the Islamic Center of England. Um, yeah. uh, it's going to be at 6, uh, sorry, 7 p.m. So do people have to pay or can they just turn No, up? you can just come in. Um, and everyone's invited, oh. uh, men, women, children. Yeah. yeah. So who writes these plays and who sort of plans what they're going to be about? We have my uncle. Um, he kind of gets uh, the play, uh, well, he gets the sections of the play from several books. So he looks and he sees the narrations because obviously we have different narrations and they differ from one another. And he sees, he tries to find um, the best one, most reliable. And then we kind of, uh, he writes it in Arabic. Mm -hmm. And then my cousin. She um, translates it all into English. Um, of course, there's also like people might check over it and see like um, the words and things and sentences. And also, once we actually uh, go to our sessions and we sit down all together and each one reads their roles um, and takes up, we see as well just in case you know any um, you know sentences that for example, don't make sense, any words okay. that can be put in, anything else from, you know, from history that can be added. Mm. Um, and we, we, we all give in parts of, you know, our, our own um, thoughts. And that sounds like quite a long process. Mm. How long does that take, usually? Um, it's actually not as uh, long as people might think. For example, uh, the play itself is written within a week or two. Oh. Okay. Uh, once, once that gets done, um, we have a session where we choose roles for each, um, you know, for each role we choose a character to mm. play. That, uh, we have, all the girls speak, for example, narrator, we ch whose voice is more clear, for example, and then we choose the person whose voice is more clear and loud for that role, or 
for example, Imam Hussein, which uh, w which person you know suitable height, mm -hmm. suitable voice, mm -hmm. suitable you know everything you know. Try we tried to get the most perfect mm. <laughs> person sure, suited, and sure. um, so it doesn't actually take as long as people think. It might just take a session or two. Um, although these sessions will take uh, three hours, because instead of mm -hmm. having the usual. You know, aqa'ed, tajweed, we have to kind of stop that yeah, and we yeah. go into, you know, going into the roles of the play and continuing more to do everything goes towards the play. So the whole time mm -hmm. is there. Um, sometimes we do try to fit in the tajweed lessons. We think they're very important. So we try to dedicate an hour um, to that. If we can't, if we really can't, we f feel that, you know, time's running out, then we have to leave that out as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, especially with schools and, and um, you know, everyone's got schools, college, university. So our time is pretty much limited, especially like, for example, our last play, it was during exam time. Uh -huh. Literally, people were doing their exams and coming in yeah. to uh, do rehearsals and things like that. And the rehearsals, it would be more than um, once a week because, you know, time is getting short. So, for example, we have like three times a week at times. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. We can't, we can't like, you know, people have drop out last minute. We really wanted someone who's dedicated and committed mm. to taking up the roles. Even this one, for example, we had a few people coming at the beginning and they wanted roles and they were actually fit for the role. But then they didn't want to come in later on and mm. we really didn't want to, mm, yeah. something that would stop us from continuing because we really want to give people as well. We want to send up the message because we can't just stop <laughs> doing our thing. Mm. So when you do these um, plays, I mean, how do you tackle issues like, um, you know, d what has the response been like? Because some people might say you shouldn't be, you know, representing the Ahlul Bayt or oh, everybody's face is covered. You know, please explain to us how you are careful around this whole situation. Yes, we have all the Ahlul Bayt's faces covered. Um, any Ashab, um, their faces obviously don't have to be covered, but we've got... Even the previous one, say the Zainab's face was covered, Fatima Zahra's face was covered, and inshallah, you will see in Imam Mahdi's play, um, say the Maryam's face will be covered, say the uh, Fatima Zahra, say the Narjis, and their, all their faces will all be concealed. So, okay, okay. And what has the response been like from the community? Do they uh, do, do they um, are they appreciative of you guys putting in so much hard work and putting on, you know, plays to kind of um, you know give to properly describe, especially to the younger generation, of, of what it was like for the Ahlul Bayt al Islam. Yeah, it's been great. Um, and even in the first one, we, we had a good turnout and we didn't really expect so many people to come because Youth of Mahdi isn't really well known at the moment because we've only started a few months back. Mm. But we had so many people um, and then even when we were like, you know, because we wanted to serve food and so on, we, we, um, we did make even more just in case that that would be the turnout. Um, and Alhamdulillah, people did come and there was enough space, Islamic Centre is quite big, Alhamdulillah, so yeah, um, it's been good and people are looking forward to our um, future plays as well. So you said the team are, are well, your, your group or organisation is just women right now. Mm -hmm. When it comes to doing performances, especially with the upcoming play, how do you get around the role of men? Do the women play the men's roles as well? Yeah, they do. <laughs> We have women um, playing the men's roles. Um, I mean, it, it's better for us and it's more comfortable to work just with us girls um, and to communicate. So um, the only man is the producer, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but he's an you know he's an old man. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's fine. You know we're we're able to get around that, and we really need a producer. I mean, if we found a women producer, we might even be more comfortable. But we're fine with that now, and. Um, so we just kind of um, just have to try our best if we, if we are men to try and to put on at least some kind of voice to change our voice to some extent. Mm. Um, we do have one little boy, he's uh, about 10 years old. He um, played in our last play and we'll be doing our, in our play in future. But he's quite small so um, we're, we're fine with that at the moment. But we don't really want to really uh, open the opportunity where you know, older men come in and, mm. you know. Is that quite weird as a team of women um, and just generally working with women and like you said, you don't want to open it up to anyone else right now. 
Um, and then performing to like everyone, like you said, women, men, children, etc. They're all welcome. Is that is that strange or is that quite nice? Because obviously you know when you're practicing the play, you know you're working towards showing everyone. It's not just going to be for women. Um, it's been fine. Actually, our previous one was only for women, um, except for example, the fathers of the people of the play were able to come. Um, you know, I'm sure that they would feel comfortable. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But this time we thought, you know, let's try opening it up to other people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some girls, they actually don't feel comfortable performing in front of the opposite gender. However, a lot of them have um, covered faces, for example, and they're fine with that. Yeah. Um, but um, hopefully they'll get used to that at some point, <laughs> you know. What about um, people who, you know, are inspired by what you're doing? And they also want to help and participate and get involved in the youth of Mehdi, especially the, you know, the doing and performing in the plays. Um, is that a possibility by, you know, just by coming in and whenever you're doing a production, they can help out and they can perform in there. Um, and if they can, how can they go about it? With our plays, um, basically we take in people who are actually committed to our lessons because we give them priority. It's unfair that other people just come all of a sudden and want to do the play when other people have been working mm. throughout these months um, you know doing other things as part of Youth of Mehdi members mm. and then we can't just take in everyone else so um, if there are any roles left or um, you know people want to join in then maybe but um, I think priority should go to members of Youth of Mehdi. And how often do you guys actually put on plays? Do you choose specific events through the year or are you still figuring out when you'll be putting them on? No, for example, this one we did have the intention to do it, so we kind of um, planned it. We've always wanted to do it, like from before, after the play of Fatima Tazar, we thought, let, you know, let's do one for Imam Mahdi, but it's not something we don't really kind of go, oh, let's do one for Imam Ali, let's do one. For... It just kind of comes about mm. and then we, we were able to perform it. Um, we try to do one that we're actually able to do as well because it's very difficult with history and picking parts and you know seeing which to uh, put forth to the audience but and um, you know with the help of Allah we're able to Inshallah. so do you foresee yourself doing something for Muharram maybe uh, we'd love to do that yeah. um, uh, if people if the majority of us are not going away to Iraq for mm -hmm. Ziara then we intend to have something, maybe it would be good to have, although the actual battle would be difficult to kind of put, mm. put especially with um, our limited members, although we might have more people coming in from now until December time, which is Muharram. Mm -hmm. So, um, inshallah, we'll have something. If not, we might have something else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody wants to become uh, a member of the Youth of Mahdi, or they want to follow, um, you know, your productions, want to come down and watch, how, how, how can they get in touch? Uh, we have our email, um, youthofmahdiahmad.co.uk, if you want to get in contact with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our Facebook group as well, it's Youth of Mahdi, and you can join. Um, hopefully, we'll get a specific number to, for uh, people to contact very soon. Um, and yeah, inshallah they can join us. Inshallah. Oh, great. That's, that's great. Thank you so much for coming uh, on our show, Sister Zahra, and we wish you the best of luck with the youth of Mehdi. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me here. Okay, well, it's now time to go to a short break, so we'll see you in a bit. Assalamualaikum and welcome back to Morning Break Part 2. Today with us in the studio we have a very special guest, Sister Zahra Jaber, who is one of the organisers of the Youth of Mahdi organisation. Assalamualaikum, Sister. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for coming in today. We can go on to the actual tafsir of the Quran, but let us perfect the laws of it and how to read it, and then inshallah ta'ala we'll go into that. And we've also got uh, another, each one is uh, separated into an hour section. And the th um, third part is presentation. Each, each one of us has like a part to do of, first of all we started off with the Matsumin. Mm -hmm. okay. Could you start by telling us a little bit about the youth of Mahdi and the, the service that they actually offer? 
basically we're a group of about 15 up to 20 depending because sometimes people leave sometimes come back depends on your commitment um, and we've kind of um, got Saturday lessons at the Islamic Centre of England mm -hmm. uh, it started off in March and we're continuing on we've only had uh, a two-week break exam time um, we have Aqaid lessons mm -hmm. uh, where we have um, people like Sheikh Hanif who have come in as well um, who will be back hopefully soon uh, we've had Sayyid Muhammad Musawi we've had Dr. Al Usi and inshallah we'll have more and more guests coming in to speak to us and you know you know broaden our knowledge uh, we've had Tajweed uh, lessons where you know we try to perfect our Quran because regardless I mean most of us are Arabic but there are still laws that you have to kind of understand mm -hmm. and you have to go into I mean not, not every Arabic person can read perfectly the, the Quran language is different to the language majority of us speak obviously so we go into that and inshallah uh, once we do that then maybe